Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name's Vin Pierre, and on today's episode, we're going for another sample Saturday. And today, we've got a couple of extra old Isla whiskies, courtesy of Mark Littler Limited. As you might have seen on a few of my previous videos, I've got a long standing collaboration going on now. I've got a huge amount of samples up on that shelf up there, um, probably about 13 videos worth where I'm going to be checking out these vintage sample sized whiskies from all over the place different times, different ages, all kinds of stuff. So yeah, keep an eye out for more of those videos. But today we've got two very well aged old Islas bottled by uh, Caden Heads. Now I actually don't know the, uh, the the dates of these, try to kind of figure it out a little bit, um, but my sleuthing skills isn't that great. Um, one thing I can tell you is that the Ardbeg was a full size bottle, um, most recently I think sold on an auction for like two grand. Uh, not sure how much these samples cost Mark before he sent them over to me. Uh, the Bemore, however, um, we couldn't find a full size bottle of that. Um, on Whiskey Base, it's only the small size bottles. Uh, actually, the Whiskey Base didn't have the large size or this size either, which is um, surprising. You know, Whiskey Base is pretty comprehensive. Um, if it exists, people tend to add it. But um, yeah, the only other thing that I had, which was really uh, not a very good kind of sleuthing but on the Bemore it says Sh proprietors sheriff's Bemore distillery now looking at my uh, handy malt whiskey yearbook that was between t uh, 1925 and 1929 which I, I severely doubt is the age of this you know we, we'd be talking about this being bottled in the 40s or something like that which doesn't seem likely could have done, but doesn't seem likely. More likely with all of these things is that they were bottled in the 80s and it was distilled in the 70s or late 60s or, you know, something around that. You know, you guys probably know more than me about stuff like this. I've, I've never pretended to be a uh, an expert in older bottles or anything like that. What I am here to do is to show that the cracking of these is important. Um, the buying of these is good because you can get these on auction sites and usually, I don't know about the price of these, but usually they're going to be, you know, they're going to be quite expensive for what they are. But the argument is, as with always with these videos, that if you were in a bar, pot still in Glasgow, for instance, and you saw a 19-year-old uh, Bemore from the 60s, let's say, arbitrary number, for 20 to 30 quid a dram, you would probably give it a go because you're not going to get to try it any other way. That's what we've got today then. So yeah, as always, um, full caveats. This is not, these aren't reviews. These are just kind of first impressions on these because I don't really review samples, but yeah, let's get into it then. First one I'm gonna do is the Ardbeg. Now you might've seen before, this is an Ardbeg uh, 17 year old. These are both 46%. Um, no information apart from that that I, that I can give really. Uh, it's old, old Ardbeg. So let's get into it and see what my kind of Impressions are. I should say as well before I get into it properly. Um, I've, I've I've now blanket taken the stance that especially these older ones with with brand new stock. Like you know, I get sent samples like this all the time. With brand new stock, I'm probably going to crack them on screen. But these ones here, they deserve a little bit better. I, I'll be honest. They deserve to be in the glass for way longer than I would give brand new releases a chance because it, you know a lot of these older bottles, especially these ones here, the fill level was down beyond. The shoulder you don't know what's gone on and they need a little bit of chance to settle that's just my thing so yeah the stance now is when I'm doing these older bottles I will have cracked them open before I will have tried them so these aren't going to be reaction videos like I, I previously thought they might be but um, yeah I think it gives them a, a fairer chance let's get on it then and see what we've got for uh, the Ardbeg okay that's interesting now I don't cover a whole heap of Ardbeg on the channel. Uh, I have covered a lot of their kind of normal releases and I've enjoyed them. And I've always said that they're a kind of like a, not, they're not like a bonfire. They're like a, they're like when the flames have gone down and it's still hot, the embers are still there. That kind of like that, that vibe is that, that seasidey campfire that's on its way down. It's not like a Lafroy, which I liken to like a dead bonfire the next morning, that kind of ashy, dirty, but really quite lovely um, sensation. Ardbeg is more like, it's more warming, it's a bit less earthy, and a bit more 
inviting, I think. But um, yeah, my point is, I'm not getting that modern Ardbeg-ness off of this. This would really confuse me if I didn't know what I was drinking. It's it's quite light on the nose. It isn't overly smoky, but I might just be acclimatised to smoke as I am these days. Let's try on the palette. Oh. Mm, okay, that's something. I mean, I'm ordinarily I'd probably edit a pause like that out, but I think it was an important pause because I mean that's just sublime. It's um okay. Try and do it some justice if we can. It's got a it's got quite a sweet nose on it, I will say. It's it's a little bit smoky, it's a little bit oaky. A bit of lemongrass, a bit of kind of vegetal but also floral at the same time. It's um it's a very it's a very light but very interesting nose. Loving that. Back to that palette again. Oh my days. It's so good. It's um again, just a touch of sweetness, a little bit of honey. There's, there's definitely smoke there now, but it's not in your face and it isn't that kind of like I was just about to say it isn't that kind of like burntness that I'm that burnt back campfire thing that I'm used to tasting. However, on the back end when the sweetness goes, I am getting a kind of like a a saline tannicness from the back end of it, um, which is very reminiscent of that kind of like coastal campfire vibes. So yeah, it, it, it 100% it isn't as earthy as um, as kind of contemporary Ardbegs, but my god, that is good. <sighs> I'm up. Traditionally, I've been um, drinking what goes in the glass. I said I'm not going to pour that back in there. That's crazy. Um, but I've been saving the rest of these to send back to Mark so that he gets to actually try some of these. But I don't know, man. He might have to drive down here and take that off me because uh, stunning. Okay. Now, uh, again, to do these things justice, I'm going to do a bit of a cleanse in between each one. But as much of a cleanse as possible when you're doing this kind of like this level of smoke. Now, next one then, we've got a 19 year old Bamore. Um, again, don't know much about when this is bottled. It's, it's obviously got the same livery as this, so it must have been in the same sort of era. Um, as a rough guess, again, I would probably say 80s, maybe 90s. I don't, I don't know, is the truth. I'm sure if I really kind of put my investigative journalist hat on, I probably could have called somebody, but that's not the point of these videos, I'm afraid. Um, you know, uh, but it is what it is. Now, it's a, it's a slightly lighter whiskey. Um, but you know, I don't really care about stuff like that. The, yeah, the interesting one about this is that we couldn't find a full size bottle of it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just one of those things. So, but more is a weird one. I've covered a few on the channel in the past. Um, I really enjoy but more, uh, I, ha I, I have noted in my whiskey career that it's a very divisive spirit. Um, not only because of the ludicrous price that it commands sometimes, not only because of the unbelievable collaborations they're doing with, um, with you know, like, I, I, is it, I think it's Bentley that they're, they're doing their thing with, which is, you know, shocking. You know, uh, I don't think, I don't think any bottle of whiskey should be 10 grand or more, but, you know, I get it. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a drinkers, there's a really basic echelon of um of, of whiskey then there's kind of like a a drinker's market which i still consider myself well in um then you've got a kind of like a collector's kind of vibe and then you've got like that next level like top end unbelievable money that i'm just uh, not interested in at all not even remotely interested in uh, don't get me wrong if somebody wants to send me a drop of a 10 grand bottle then more than happy to give it a try but uh, I, I can't imagine that i would say anything other than it is not worth the money because I, I can't imagine any whiskey being that anyway high horse but yeah my point is with Bamore that it's um on top of all of that it's got a very very 
divisive flavour profile, which I, you know I've called funky in the past, but I know that that, that word doesn't translate across the ponds necessarily. Um, I've said that about a couple of distilleries. That includes things like Bamore, Aaron. You know, they've all got this kind of um, we call it a funkiness, which is kind of like something a bit off the wall, a bit something different about it that um, can put off people. Uh, and I know that it's Bamore is not for everybody, but yeah, let's get into it and see what we've got. Wow, that has got a nose on it. What am I even smelling? It's um, I tell you, the closest thing I've ever smelled to this in a whiskey is uh, another Bamore. Actually, it was the the um, the Vault uh, the Vault Editions Number One. I can't remember what it was. I reviewed it a while ago, and it had this like it's it's like a kumquat note to it. That's that's quite distinctive. Let's get onto the palette quickly. Oh my god. That is unbelievable. Oh, it's so um it's got like a yeah, I'm sort of picking this out on the fly, but it's got kind of got a sugary note to it along with that really distinctive kumquat flavor profile, which is really interesting. Let's go back to the nose. Yeah. I mean, that's that is that is the flavor of the flavor of this. I'm sure I could probably pick more out given time, but it's um, it's sweet. It's it's got almost like a like a lime edge to it, which is again something very um, atypical for whiskey. Kumquat, sweet lime. I don't know. That's about as fair as I can get with this. Let's go back to the palette one more time. Oi. That is absolutely stunning. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, hmm. oh, I absolutely love that. Love both of these actually. But um, well, okay. So for me, you know, rounding this up, I would say. I, I mean, I don't really do scores, but you know, when I'm sending these over to Mark, I, I end up giving him a score, um, and I would say probably. I don't like to use point fives, but I would say the uh, the yard bag probably is more like an eight point five nine. And the Bamore is more like a nine nine point five. That Bamore is easily the best whiskey that I've tried of these little ranges so far, um, and that's even above those Linkwoods I tried last time, which were also really really good. But I uh, would be, I'd be very surprised if I try a whiskey that good again this year. Who knows? Maybe, maybe. You know, it's it's one of those things because it's old. It's low ABV, technically low ABV compared to some of the other ones that we see these days. But it's got that. It's got age behind it. It's got that kind of like classic Scotch age behind it, which you cannot replicate quickly. And it's just yeah, unbelievable. Um, again, I'm not sure how much these cost, but definitely worth looking out for if they're uh, they're on uh, auction still. Yeah, they might be gone. I'm sorry, Mark, you might not get them, but that's, uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to enjoy these over the rest of my evening very, very slowly, I think, and just let them evolve because what a lucky boy, what a lucky boy. Okay, enough of that. I'm sure you don't want to see me swoon over these anymore, but hopefully you're enjoying these old sample videos. If you are, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below because um, I want to keep making these, but, um, you know, it really depends on you guys watching them, of course, but uh, yeah. Stunning, <laughs> kind of kind of speechless about them, but yeah, I'll uh, I'm gonna enjoy this, and I'll see you again on more videos coming soon. Cheers.